How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. So today I am reviewing the Bofeng UV 5G Pro handheld GRMS radio. What I'm going to do first is just read through some technical specifications, some general observations and key features, and then we're going to jump right into the operational test where my wife drives in the car to a couple key checkpoints that we use for testing our handheld radios. It kind of gives us the general operational range. Whenever we get new radios, we like to test them, know what the operational limits of those radios are. Again, this is going to be a kind of a worst case scenario, so she's not getting out of the car, trying to get the best signal. Everything is done in the car, and I'm upstairs on the second floor, so all the tests are consistent and the same across the board. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and read through some of these specifications. So again, GRMS radio, 22 simplex channels. That's just simple talking back and forth eight GRMS uh, repeater channels pre-programmed in. Uh, you're able to, uh, it has an additional uh, frequency scanning range on this radio. So it's 350 to 390 megahertz. So you're gonna be able to listen in on some of those ham communications and some other communications on that frequency band, as well as the other ham radio bands. Uh, it's got AM, FM dimensions. This thing is, this is a small radio, y'all. This is 2.2 inches by 4.29 inches and it weighs 0.45 pounds. I've got the extended antenna on it. We're gonna be using the extended antenna for our test. Comes with that. Um, so some key observations slash features. This has no USB charging on it. Uh, it does have an 18 milliamp battery as well, which isn't that big, uh, but that is a common battery size and you can get an extended battery for this radio for around $15. You do have to use the charging cradle with this radio, though it does not have USB charging on it. Uh, so say that for what it is, right? I don't know if that's a con for some of you all, if it's a pro for some of you all. I like being able to just drop it in the charger. But at the same time, if I'm out and about, I don't uh, have a, an outlet, a 110 that I can use, uh, then I tend to like to rely on USB, right? So it'd be nice if it had both. Maybe both can look into that. It's got dual display, so you can uh, kind of listen to two banks at once and be kind of managing two uh, different frequencies at the same time, just like the Plus Edition. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's got the NOAA weather alerts and emergency uh, a receiver built into this radio. And, of course, again, you can program in custom frequencies to a custom channel on this radio uh, to basically extend the NOAA capabilities if you happen to find a new NOAA frequency. Voice activation, CTCSS, DCS privacy codes. Um, again, programmable re uh, repeater offsets. Um, so you can select the steps also for your scanning uh, from 2.5 kilohertz all the way up to 50 kilohertz. Built-in LED flashlight and strobe. Um, and then of course it's compatible with the Kenwood accessories. What do I mean by that? I'll just show you a quick example here. I have a push to talk uh, headset here that I use when I'm out in the field. And it's got this two pin connector on it right here uh, that it's compatible with that. I don't know if I'm able to get to focus on that, but it's a two pin connector that plugs into the side of the radio that lets you um, connect various accessories for voice activation, microphones, headsets, and things like that. So those are the general features, y'all. Like typical radio, it's pretty good. Again, it's got that extended um, receive for Bofang radios. That is uh, technically a new feature from the radios that I've had. Uh, my other Bofang radios, I'm not able to program in the 350 to 390 megahertz. So that is an extended receive uh, scanning range there. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go upstairs, get my wife uh, to start uh, getting ready to hop in the car. We're gonna be doing our range test and it's gonna be between two of the UV 5G Pro radios. So that's how we conduct our handheld tests. Um, and then moving forward, we're probably gonna start conducting tests with our base station just because that's what we're using. That's gonna be a reality for us. We're probably not gonna be just operating on two handhelds. But if you're interested and you're getting started in GRMS, we like to do uh, these tests with uh, two of the same radios. Because if you're just getting into comms, there's a good chance you're gonna buy two of the same radios just to get you started, right? And so that's why we like to uh, do these tests with two radios. Again, the extended antenna, and we've got a preset route that we do on all the radios, all the different brands of radios that we like to test. So let's get started with that, and we'll see you at the end. Whiskey Sad 245, radio, radio check. And there it is. This is Whiskey Sad 245, Radio Lima Charlie. You can go ahead Head to checkpoint two. How copy over? Radio Lima Charlie. Whiskey Sad 
This is Whiskey Sad 245. I hear you, Lima Charlie. Pretty darn good. I'll copy me over. Copy pretty clear, but there is some static. Let's go ahead and hit up check. <laughs> Gotcha. This is Whiskey Sad 245 Base. Read you, Lima. Not Charlie. Very, very crackly. Same here. Whiskey Sad 245, could you uh, roll your... Windows are down. Radio is vertical. Copy that. Can you just stay put for one second? I'm going to go hop on the base station and just double check from the base station and see how that works. Over. All right, going to fire this thing up here. This is Whiskey Sad 245 base. This is Whiskey Sad 245 Base. I, I read you a lot better on the base station. How would you say better now? Over. Way better on the base station. Over. Copy that. All right, so let's talk about the test results here for a moment. I'm gonna give you some observations that we made. So we noticed right away that these radios did have a lot more static in general communication throughout the different checkpoints than the, for example, UV uh, 5G Plus and also the UV 9G. Those are two other Bofang radios we have. A little more static on the Pro Edition uh, throughout those checkpoints. And at checkpoint three, yeah, we could hear some words, but communication was really tough at that checkpoint where the UV 5G Plus, we were able to actually communicate and have a conversation at that checkpoint with that radio. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it was better than the Pro. Now, with that said, there could be all kinds of reasons why this is. It could have to do with atmospheric differences, right? Differences in our environment, maybe more leaves, uh, maybe something to do with solar flares or who knows, right? All kinds of different weird environmental factors can come into play why this had a little bit more static than the UV 5G+. Plus. So I don't want to just uh, eliminate this radio as a possibility because it didn't reach as far. So just keep that in mind. We can't control the environmental factors completely. We do try to stick to cloudy days or overcast days when we do these tests. Um, and then uh, that's basically what we're aiming for there just to have the same um, basically as close to the same environment as possible of course no rain or anything like that as well uh, now this radio is built of pretty hard plastic so i just want to also point that out it's made of the same rugged plastic as the uv 5g plus <clears throat> i actually love the plastic on these radios compared to some other brand radios it's got really good grip on the radio but it is pretty a tiny for me for my hands um, but again it's really compact you get that extra frequency range there now one other difference i want to just uh, bring up compared to another bofang radio which is the uv 9g is that the uv 5g pro is not weatherproof now neither is the uv 5g plus that is not weatherproof either uh, however it is worth noting that you wouldn't want to necessarily drench this in you know drop this in a puddle or drop this in a lake or a pool or anything like that but I have had these radios, not the Pro, but the Plus Edition in some pretty rainy conditions, very wet conditions, wet snow conditions, and never had an, a pro, any problem. But you have to understand that one little drop of water is all it takes on the electronics to uh, give you some serious issues. Uh, whereas the UV9G uh, is full IP weatherproof rating. So there is that difference there. And again, on the Plus, the difference between the Plus and the Pro, you're looking at uh, the Pro offers extended uh, receive frequencies of that 350 to 390 megahertz, smaller in size, but again, a little bit more static on this. So the price point here, we're looking at $29.99 for one of these radios. And for the Plus Edition, you're looking at, I think it was $39.99 last time I checked. So the Plus Edition is actually more expensive than the Pro Edition. And so if you are on a tight budget and you want to get started with emergency communications or just in general communications around your home, your homestead, or for emergency purposes, the Pro Edition is going to work perfectly well 
for that. Again, the whole distance thing that we ran into at checkpoint three, there's probably some nuance with our environment there. However, I can't say for sure, but you saw the test, you were able to kind of see that these radios work pretty good out of the box. So with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.